That chaplain, if, you, if, if maybe we, if you got the inmates lined up one after the other, we'd get their testimony and, and get it done and stuff. I said, no way, they're all going to be out on assignments. I contacted everybody except the election may come from Ireland. And he showed up one time. How did he find it out? I didn't sleep that night. I had pains in my stomach coming in the room. We go over there. The superintendent gave us 45 minutes of his time. Unheard of. The inmates were lined up one after the other. We got all their testimony all done. They were so happy with us, they put on a whole musical program for the inmates. I said, Lord, I didn't enjoy it. I have pain in my stomach. I didn't that. The Lord said, you're relying on yourself and not on me. You're relying on yourself and not on me. I want to be a part of your ministry. You've got to allow me to have room in your ministry. So I, the, the Lord gave me Psalms 32a. What does 32a say? Do what? That I will instruct you. Wait a minute. Are you reading it out of the Bible or are you quoting it? <laughs> I quote it. Well, I don't know what you quote it. I want to know what the Bible says, please. 32 eight. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Now you're not reading that right, Donald. Yeah, that's it. What? Huh? Sorry, that's it. I'll instruct Frank and teach Frank in the way Frank shall go. <coughs> See? My name is not you. It don't apply to me unless you put my name in there. The Lord's talking to me. He knows what my name is. You okay, sister? You got that? If you don't make the Bible real, if you don't have a real relationship with the Lord, you're going to miss it. you got to know that who's talking to you and hear him talk to you. It's amazing how that stuff works. We had divided up the state into four areas, and we're going to go to different areas and, and, and introduce prison ministry. The first one, one of the big places was going to be Miami. And I have a, I got a one or two uh, ex-inmates who are working with me because when they speak to you, it makes a lot more than, than when, when I speak to you. When we did the Miami one, Big by Miami Temple Church. Neither one of the ex inmates could be with me. I didn't sleep that night. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go down to the face up down here and pray new guy with, on the on the block on prison ministry. And I don't can't have one of them next year. When we started meeting down there, there was not one but two ex two ex inmates were just baptized that morning at the Miami Church. I couldn't have asked for any more of my program. Lord, I didn't enjoy that. So I just don't rely on yourself and not me. See, the Lord has to teach us. He wants to be a part of it. You mom and dad had kids and you want to be in their life when Jesus created us to be in his life. In his life. He's not standing on the side. He wants to be a part of it. He wants to talk to me. And he knows that I'll talk to you. 26 years we have a relationship. I can hear his voice and he knows it. 26 years he knows me. I'm not here by chance. I'm here by the providence of God. Almost every place that God has taken me to, Somebody has said, God has sent you here for me today. It's providence. I'm nobody. Just somebody who's willing to be used by God. I could care less about what my property. I got 15 acres the Lord gave Maxie and I. I could care less about it. So many is what it's all about. Donna walks here. I trained her to take over the land program. We have a program for babies born behind prison walls. 
The mother is incarcerated. She has no opportunity to bond with that child. That child has to be out in 24 hours. What a legacy for this new generation. This church has so much we could do for this next generation. You want to say something? So much we got. Why aren't we trying to help this next generation? Spirit of Prophecy says the first six years of a child's life is the most important. So the Lord pressed me to start a program called the Lamb Program, Love a Mother's Baby. If the mother asks us, I will try to find somebody in the local church that would be willing to put together a nice lay at little gals, little booties and this, and deliver to the child and the caretaker in the mother's name. Probably the best gift that child's ever going to get in his life. And then every, and the mother in prison, she'll hoard a bar of soap or toothpaste and she'll wrap that and send it to the child for the birthday. We can put together a little gifts and take to the birth of the kids. What do you think? You think that's a good program? We had 40 some kids in one area of Florida and couldn't find one adult willing to go visit their kids. Can't go and visit or give a gift to a child. We've had some success with it. Donna runs that program. She has to, she has to go and talk and beg people to help her out doing that, that, that ministry and stuff. We're not committed. We're not willing. We're not ready. There's all kinds of things to do. <clears throat> now, Maxine and I were working day and weekend, weekend and week. We operated this thing out of our house for a long time. It was seven days a week, anywhere from 11 to 12 hours a day. You don't realize how many people out there are hurt. We have a newsletter we print for inmates every month. See, my Bible says, go into the world and preach this gospel to every creature. That means we have to have a program no matter where they are. What do we do about those on death row or in solitaire? We just can't go in and do a little Bible study. We must have a program. The Lord has shown me that to print this little newsletter because it will go in places you and I can't even go. That newsletter went all the way to Africa and Maxine got a, got a letter from a 12 year old girl in Africa who wasn't Bible study. This conference is the only conference that has a complete prison ministry program to reach the in reach wherever they are. And I have introduced these programs to other conferences. But they've not picked it up. There's a couple that use our newsletter, but the majority of them don't. We're in the end time. I don't know whether you know about what the Pope wrote this in Central. You know what it's about? Anybody know about that? Yeah. You all know about that? His solution to global warming is a Sunday law. Yeah. And everybody's going to jump on the bandwagon for that. And our a good president said, we, the United States, ought to be the first to initiate this. I would not be surprised if when the Pope comes over here in September, we have a Sunday ball on the books. You all think that the Lord is going to take you at the end time and turn you around to be what you should be? We should be we're supposed to be prepared to go into heaven. That means our diet and everything we do must be in harmony with what the Lord would have us to do. Maxie and I wanted a couple days off to get a little, little rest. That's not too much to ask for, Tom, is it? We're getting ready to leave. I get a phone call from New York. They're having a prison ministry training program Friday and Saturday, Saturday. And the guy who's supposed to do it can't make it. Will I come up and help him? <laughs> I said, let me think about it, pray about it. We call the people we're going to go visit. He said, we said, well, you know you got to go. I said, honey, get the stuff, put it in the van. We're going to take off. If we don't start driving now, we'll never get there in time. We'll have to drive all the day and all the bar in order to get there in time. 
Get ready to walk out of the house. My new roof starts leaking about a foot in front of my desk. And it's pouring in a nice good stream. I said, honey, get a five-gallon bucket put on there. We're going to New York. I walked out of the house and I said, Lord, you call me to go to New York. We're going to go. You need to take care of your leave. <laughs> All you know where? Everything I got belongs to God. I don't own anything. It might be in my name, but it belongs to God. If he wants it tomorrow, he can take it tomorrow. Matter of fact, we're praying that he takes our 15 acres and we give the money to the mission. There's nothing in this world. Amen. Nothing. We took off and we went. And we did the program up there. My. I got a call from a young man who's up in Bluntstown, Florida. Now let me tell you, the Lord put me in serious training for six to nine months after I quit my job. I did this Bible, had a spirit of prophecy. This young man called me begged me to come up here and help him. He didn't know how to run a program from week to week. So I went up here with another elder, and I had Bible lessons in, uh, wrapped in cellophane and the, with the uh, Steps to Christ and the uh, Bible reading for the home and a Bible all packed in cellophane packs to give to these guys. So I asked Brother Nova, I said, how many expect to come out of my program tonight? He said, 50. I told this elder, I went, look, let's take it about 56, because I don't want to disappoint an in inmate. The only chance I have to see these guys is one time. I, I take it, it's about six extra packages. I said, you know what? I said, we got our, we got my, our video equipment with us. Why don't we go to see if we can get a video of this tonight? It's unheard of. I walked up the gate. I said, look, we're doing this program tonight. I said, uh, we got our video equipment. How about a guy give us permission to video it? With 20 minutes, they gave us permission to video it. Amen. Unheard of, I'm telling you. Is that clock right? <laughs> 20 minutes, we have permission. We went in there that night. 63 inmates filled the room. Just about this. Amen. I'm sitting up here with pains in my stomach. <laughs> I got 56 packages, and there's 63 inmates. Bless you. When it came time to give out the Bible lessons, everybody got one. Some got two, and five or six extra came back up at the end. Amen. See, God is in the business of making a success out of your program, no matter what you plan. He wants to be a part of your ministry. I got this all on video. That's the kind of God I serve. Amen. Never lets me down. I'm going to let him down, but he never lets me down. Amen. I decided I wanted to do a revival in prison. Seven nights. Revival in prison, an hour and a half to two hours every night to go in and hit these inmates with what we believe. Amen. In four nights, four nights, give them enough time to make a decision by Wednesday they want to get baptized. Then Thursday and Friday we work with them to make sure what they understand and then Saturday we have a baptism. The Lord opened up Henry Correction down in Immokalee, Florida. I called my good friend, who's a, I'm going to show his video just about time in, this afternoon, the end of my program. I'm going to show it 20 minutes. He was in prison 20 some time, had a throat cut, four doctors said he couldn't never talk. And I'm going to show his video this afternoon. I called him up and I said, Harry, will you come down and help me do this revival? He said, Frank, nobody gets a week in prison. Nobody gets a week in prison. I work for a God that gives me what I want to do. What I ask him. Well, Harry Reed. Harry's on his way down from South Carolina to meet me in Leesburg, Florida, to be down in at Henry in the Mockley, Florida, down in Naples. The storm hit so bad it blew his windshield wiper going off. Oh uh, good. Windshield wiper going north as he's going south. <coughs> He missed a turn to my, to, to my house by 50 miles. 
He got to my house late, and I have a, a, a big van that the Lord gave me years ago in order to do this work. And I said, Harry, get your stuff, put it in the van, we got to get, get going. Halfway down there, he said he left his wallet and, and his car parked in my carport. I said, Harry, you can't get into the prison tonight. And I said his picture ahead of time. I had to go and do the program. I said to, to the inmates, I said, Harry, you know, but they were so upset that he wasn't there. I mean, they were going to do all kinds of stuff. But they knew I wasn't him. I said, but look, if Harry's not here, it's because God didn't want him here, and I'm going to do the program tonight. And I did the program. When we finished, they came up and they said, you know what? We're glad Harry wasn't here for what you told us tonight. <laughs> I don't know what I told him because I, the Spirit of Prophecy said, he'll put words in our mouth that will tell upon hearts. Amen. <laughs> if you don't believe that, then you, you, you're missing out. Satan was so upset with him and us getting together to do this, he had that storm hitting all day. The winds your wife were going, this, that, and the other. Well, and he had a hurricane in Naples, Florida, in the middle of the week. This prison is out in the swamps out there with a little old black road on it with snakes and alligators all over the place. And if I hadn't taken my van, we couldn't have got there because the roads were all flooded. Boats were sinking into the dock. That's how bad the hurricane was. And I said, Harry, we got to go out there because you're expecting us to come. And we went out there. They're standing out the door in the rain and hurricane waiting for the word of God. Hallelujah. Because they wouldn't let them in until we were in place. Then we baptized 26. Amen. But nobody gets a week in prison. I said, okay, Lord, nobody gets a week for them. Next year I want to do two weeks. <laughs> the Lord knows Brown came in jail. Chaplain Browswell said to me, Chaplain Barton, I'm going to give you an opportunity to preach to every inmate in here. I'm, every night I'm going to bring you down to a different floor, seven floors. When God opens the door, I'll walk through it. Amen. Fill the room every night. We preach, preach it to the rapists and the child busters also, because that we're in the room. I try to have a little time at the end talking to the inmates about what's going on. The inmates said to me, I've been sitting in here six months trying to figure out how I'm going to blow my wife's brains out when I get out of here. But you guys have changed my life tonight. And I know I need to go another direction and leave that woman alone. Amen. Changing lives, what it's all about. We didn't have time to do the thing where we could baptize at the end of the week. I had a, I was every night bringing down a different floor. We had 192 signed up for Bible lesson. Amen. There wasn't a Bible in that prison. And here we are talking about the Word of God. And when Maxine and I went home, we went to the Adventist Outdoor Club and had them raise 500 enough money for 500 Bibles to send down that prison. Change your mind. <coughs> We're getting ready to leave because i got another week in Okeechobee. So Harry said, well, let's go into Morris's down here in Fort Lauderdale and we'll get a bite to eat and we'll take off to go to uh, Okeechobee. Is that all right? We went in 11.35. We came out 12.05. Harry said, Frank, i just seen our car being driven off at the parking lot. $23,000 rental car, stole it. All our, our sermons, all, everything's gone in our minutes, all my equipment, everything is gone in our minutes and we need to be a local children. I went down the street, I said, budget, I said, this car has been stolen, I need another one to go to local children. <coughs> Halfway to Okeechobee, the storm hit so bad going around those sugarcane fields, we couldn't see whether we were on the road half the time. We got to Okeechobee, we were supposed to start the meeting at 6 o'clock, 6 o'clock came, 6 5, 6 10, 6 15, 20. I said, What's going on? So many inmates wanted to get in, they closed the gate and sent half of them back to the barracks. Hungry for the Word of God. Broke my heart. They allowed 150 
two or something in them. But they all couldn't get in, and they made them, they, they made them upset that they wouldn't come back, the rest of them wouldn't come back the next night. But that week we brought, we baptized the head of the Latin King Gang in Miami. Wow. Hallelujah. Change the lives, what it's all about. Yeah. Now I want to tell you this. Satan may be mad. He may be mad when he had my car stolen and left us stranded on the streets of Fort Lauderdale with my friend, with Harry Will. I said, Lord, I hate to tell you this, but I want to get even. <laughs> and next year, I want to do five revivals instead of two. When Satan attacks, I go, go out more. I do more. This church needs to quit backing up. Amen. We need to move forward. Amen. God is on our side. Who can be against us? Amen. Change of lives, what it's about. Amen. I'm going to tell you a quick story. Is it okay I'll tell you a story? Yes. Maxie and I were coming back from Chicago from our daughter's house about four days before New Year's with our granddaughter. And I I fell down, and she got one of these big, these houses got high ceilings and stuff, and I fell down the steps right across my my uh, shoulder blades. And I, I swear this Satan kicked my feet out. Because when you fall, you usually fall on your butt, you know. But he, right across my foot. So anyhow, I asked Maxine to drive. So we're coming to the north in the, in the, in the uh, Chattanooga, and she said, honey, the red light just came on. I said, honey, here's the thing. I said, get off this thing as soon as you can. She got down the bottom. The time she got to the bottom, the bottom of the power steering was gone, and, and the uh, brakes were gone, power brakes. I said, honey, see if you can get in that little convenience store over there. So she tried hard. She got it over there. She couldn't park right, but she just got in there. I called AAA up. I said that uh, I'm in trouble on that. I need some help. He said, well, where do you want to get the tow to? I said, I don't know anybody here. I'm at the mercy of AAA. He said, well, look, here, you call this guy. This is the guy we just talked to. I mean, we're going to call <coughs> and uh, make arrangements. So I called this number that he told me to call. And the guy said to me, well, we ain't coming out. He said, this is a holiday weekend. We ain't going to open up again until Monday. <laughs> I, and it's cold. It's freezing out. I mean, it's bitter. <coughs> so I called AAA back and I said, look, I said, that guy said he ain't going to come. He's, he's closed. He ain't going to. He said, well, I don't know who you talk to, but this guy said he's going to be there in 10 minutes. This red pickup, or this red tow truck pulled in. The guy looks around. Go, drives out, goes around the block, goes back over the, inter the interstate. I said, honey, 